landlines. Landlines uh, tend to be used by us electrosensitive as being probably a lower uh, lower EMF solution. However, there are situations where it um, it uh, <clears throat> the fields coming off uh, landline phones can be quite high. And that can be for a number of reasons. And so um, I just want to go through. The first off is um, noise from the line. And particularly now with uh, lots of fiber going in, the power supplies for the fiber, uh, where you interface copper to uh, the optic fiber, um, can produce a lot of dirty electricity on the line. And therefore, we would recommend a, a filter um, and of a slightly enhanced type, which is available on our website, which filters out the higher frequencies so that you don't get any of the data frequencies and you, you only get you only get the voice frequencies. So that's the first one. A very simple data filter that where you plug um, either you from the actual um, BT um, master plug, where you plug your um, your voice phones into, um, or into each individual socket on the wall wired up, which are wired up through the house uh, to that particular thing. So, um, that that is a useful and important thing. Now, the other the next point of view is to make sure that the any headsets that you are using or wearing um, actually are um, not radiating. Um, audio frequency magnetic fields into your head so that an ordinary well big big headset like this one um has very very high audio frequency magnetic fields radiating into into your head this particular one is interesting it's called an ultrasound um and it's a professional one with with reduced um <clears throat> audio frequency magnetic fields coming out of the of the cans over your ears and i find it a lot better to use than than others it's called ultra sona u l t r u s o n e but otherwise um it's very important to have um uh, air tube headsets So if we if we take this one, this is um, for sale on our website, which is the professional headset, and notice that um, there's a, quite a thick wire or cable coming down to this unit here. This is an air tube headset, uh, which goes down into here, so that the the microphone has a the microphone has a receiver in, in this box here. And not only that, also in this box is, is a little um, loudspeaker, which transmits the sound up to this earpiece here. So that when I use this uh, so-called professional headset, um, it's um, usable in many different situations. Um, not not just sitting at your own desk um, at home, but also, for instance, in the car, because it's only got one of these so that it's relatively stable. You can still hear what's going on around you. Now, as standard, they come with an RJ, an RJ12, which plugs it into the bottom of a phone like this one. I um, hope you can see it. Um, and so that you can use all your, I use all my work phone calls. Well, when you ring me up and I've answered the phone, um, this is what, this is what I use. So, but now coming 
but we've added this adapter so that you can convert this to plug in to a three and a half millimeter phono, which is uh, in the bottom of a phone here, so that I can now use uh, this um, this unit, um, this headset on on my phone. Um, so uh, we've already gone into how our phone can be used. On the internet, excuse me. We are. Can be used on the internet with one of these. So you've got um, a rather worn out, <laughs> shows how much I use it, um, ethernet cable here plugged into the bottom of this adapter, which has got a USB-C on the end of it. Um, and a plug this in there, and there's the power supply. Then this get plugs into my phone, and when it's working, then those lights, those lights light up, light up. And the reason for having this particular kind of device. The reason for having this kind of device is to um, is is to keep this this charged and your phone charged, so you, you can use it all day without. So the with this, with my mobile, um, it's switched on to just to go through it again. It's switched on to um, flight mode, um, so there's no radiation coming out of it from either Bluetooth or or, or Wi-Fi. Um, is connected to the internet. So I've got WhatsApp and email and all that kind of thing from this. Um, and if this was an Apple, um, uh, there's an application which allows you to be online like this, where to get your um, voice calls and your SMS. Um, I haven't yet, and if anybody knows a way of doing it, please tell me, I haven't yet found a way of being on flight mode and um, of being on flight mode and to be able to receive SMSs and, um, and voice. So I still have to have on the settings on this, um, I have to, to keep occasionally, so I get my voice messages and that kind of thing, switch on 3G only um, and not 4G or 5G. And I can, um, I can, I can then, I've got full service on on this, but I massively reduce the amount of radiation that, that I get every day. So, um, also a note on, I saw an article somewhere, so the, uh, and on using the air tube headsets, um, I saw an article um, a while back where they say, they were saying that the, the way embryonic cells um first of all they first of all divide and you get stem cells and the organization of those stem cells is determined by um audio frequency magnetic fields which of course is exactly what you normally get from one of these and most particularly for bud um earpieces um that have got a loudspeaker in them because that loudspeaker is driven by magnetic by very strong ma magnetic fields and um they're they're right by your brain um and and therefore it um is rather unhealthy um and the other thing is that ear nerve cancer um is a cancer that is not still rare, but is growing very, very fast. Um, and there is a very um, engaging account of uh, uh, a, a person who has an uh, ear nerve cancer operated on. Um, she's Canadian um, and it's a really good novel. I recommend it. Um, 
And if I could find it in a minute while we're talking, I will. I, I know I've got it on my bookshelf behind here. And um, so that's that's really phones and how to reduce. Yeah. Hello. Right. Um, so that's that. And the next thing I wanted to do was um, was to start talking about um, how to do your own surveys. Um, basically, saying what I do, um, but if you'd rather um, do it yourself. Um, so the first thing is to look at, the, um, at my website and look at the the meters you need. Um, and I strongly, I strongly recommend the for microwave radiation, so high frequency radiation, the SLT Classic Two, um, which is based on the old Enfield's um, Acousticom Two, um, which, which, uh, sorry, I've got occasional noises on on the on the line here. Um, and so, and the reason for using that is just that the output from the device, well, there's two reasons. There's the output from the device is very memorable. I've been with lots of customers that have got cheaper meters um, and um, the, the output doesn't mean enough um, for people to remember. Whereas the output on the the classic two is is traffic lighted, so it's based. It's suitable for a mildly uh, sensitive, electro sensitive, and um, that will um, and it's scaled with sort of green, green, amber, uh, red. So in the amber, um, it's okay for during the day. But you need to be well into the green um, for, for for the areas where you are at night. So in your bedroom where you sleep, um, and um, uh, you need you need to be in the green. And it's very memorable and it's very intuitive. Anything else with just um, numbers or graphs or whatever else, people people don't remember. And uh, it's and it's just they're just numbers and um, and it's not nearly so good. So the great thing about whatever meter you get, make sure that it's got LEDs and it's and it's traffic lighted. The other thing about the Classic 2, like the Acousticon 2, is that it is able to record very short bursts. So you've got short bursts in, in many, many uh, types of signal. And they are, by the cheaper meters, they're just completely, you just completely miss them. And so you might as well not have a meter at all if you're going to have um, if you're going to have that, and I, I tell you, who's very good on that is Jeremy Jones's updated um, website. He's recently updated it, and included more information, and he's got very sensible advice there. The key thing is for the uh, meter for measuring microwaves. In other words, from about um, a fraction of a gigahertz up to about eight gigahertz, where all the common stuff is, all of the the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, um, mobile mast radiation, mobile phone radiation is is all all in that band, including indicators for five G. So um, from the mast to the um, the ordinary signals, not the beam signals, not the high uh, ultra fast beam signals, are at it's slightly higher frequencies. So instead of 0.8 and two and a half, they're at 3.6. And you can see those now. And the networks are being switched on. But the high frequency stuff isn't doesn't seem to be being used as yet. It's going to come, but uh, we 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 haven't we haven't noticed it yet. But anyway, so first first thing to get is an S SLT um classic two very simple to use indeed um and it, it's it's non-directional um and it um is very accurate and 
receives lots of different signals. So that, for instance, you can easily pick up a smart meter. I am very, very sensitive to smart meters and they're really insidious because um, I, it, they come on slowly. Um, they come on slowly and um, the, the, the pulses um, every 15 seconds, it just goes And then uh, very often you've got a characteristic. So these, um, the smart meters um, have got two transmitters. One is just to transmit the reading uh, back to the utility company and it's very short, it's like, um, and it's just a few bits. Um, and that's every 15 seconds. But either side of that, there's a sort of um, wibbly wobbly noise um, called by something called Zigbee normally, um, which communicates between the uh, smart meter and the the unit that you have, which which indicates everything that you typically, um, a standalone unit, often in a kitchen, which says, um how much energy you're consuming consuming and that kind of thing so that every 15 seconds you have a set of pulses one just local low power zigbee and a high power very short pulse and of course high powered very short pulses um don't allow time for the human body to get used to them and they tend to be far worse than lower level continue continuous pulses so it's the difference between looking at a candle burning and having a camera flash uh, flash at you. And um, that, that's why the smart meters affect, affect electrosensitives really badly. Now, um, so that's, that's the high frequency meter. And then we need to be looking at also low frequency stuff. And um, so, our electricity supply, thanks to thanks to Mr. Tesla, um, we have um, the, the, the genius. Um, our power distribution um, is possible because it's alternating current. And what alternating current allows is allows us to change voltages. And we need very high voltage to go long, long distance and not to have too many heating losses. The first time they installed um, power to Manhattan, all the wires caught fire because um, it, it was too low voltage and it, it, it needs to be low voltage to be safe, but it, it needs to be high voltage, um, not to over, overheat um, uh, because you can get more power to another place um, if you have higher voltages. So um, by having alternating current, um, and in America, it's 60 cycles a second. And in, over here, it's 50 cycles a second. It allows us to use transformers to change the voltage. So the nearer you get to home, the, the, the amount the voltage goes down. So uh, it's something like over into the local substation, which is every in a, in a town, every 300 meters or so, um, you've got 100, over 100,000 volts. Um, and um, then it's broken at the substation, it goes down to 230 volts, 240 volts. And then when we plug in our own electronics, there's another little transformer that works at 50 hertz that converts down to 20 volts to charge your laptop, nine volts to charge your mobile phone or whatever it needs to drive the printed circuit board, like in, in your screen or in your computer. So that's why we've got alternating current. And so we need to look at the alternating current or low frequency 50, 50 hertz, centered on 50 hertz, a low frequency electric fields and magnetic fields. And at those frequencies, at those low frequencies, the, um, the electric field works completely separately to the magnetic field. Um, and you need to take readings and measure them in, in, in different ways. So the meter, so the classic one here is um, you switch it on and it goes to magnetic. And you switch it, uh, press the button again, and it switches to the electric field. 
and um, so and you measure that rather differently. So um, on these um, uh, electric and uh, low frequency meters, you you very very much need one, and we have a, a new device because um, M fields don't are, have have closed and. So we, we now recommend a really, really good device um, from a company that I have used for many years um, who have, have been to their factory, actually, um, near Nuremberg in Germany, and um, they have a, a very, very high quality devices. So um, they, um, and, and that's called Gig, Gigahertz Solutions, and our, our website has, has um, um, has the ability to do it, to to order um, those, and um, next time I do something like this, I'll have the new the new uh, gigahertz solutions uh, machine, and I'll go through how to use it. Um, so that's low frequency. We've done high frequency microwaves, and we've done low frequency, which is all the mains driven. Uh, wires, the wires in the walls, the light bulbs, um, all that kind of stuff, um, and, and any cabling, driving, lighting, or computing, or water heating, or whatever, they will all be picked up by the, the low frequency meter. So um, I will come on to how you use these devices in the different situations where people sleep, uh, where um, where we work, um, where we eat, uh, uh, where we drive, and so on. Um, but for now, so we've we've done high frequency, we've done low frequency. Now, our bodies are just as electrical as they are chemical. So up to now, all the studies have been about biochemistry, and the medical paradigm is all around um, drugs and and, and chemicals and biochemicals. But just as important as that for your health is good electromagnetic hygiene. And um, so all of our different systems, just like uh, complex, any complex system, has what's called resonance. So that um, the cl classically easily understood is musical instruments. So musical instruments will play a particular note. And if, if you, are, for instance, have a tuning fork and you've just tuned your guitar absolutely accurately to it, um, it will, if you play that note, say you, you play that note on a piano or um, ding, ding the um, tuning fork again, that those that frequency will pulsate through air and will um, cause the guitar string you've just tuned to that particular note to start vibrating. And you can actually put a microphone to that. Um, you can stop the, the original noise and you'll hear the, the guitar um, resonating, i.e. playing that note. Now, all of our systems in our body, the nerves, the uh, the organs, whatever, have a particular have particular resonant frequencies in different parts of the um, different parts of the organs, um, the brain, and each different nerve, each different bone, each has got resonant frequencies, and so um, and these are electrical resonant frequencies. Well, and they also have. Um, acoustic as well, but we're more concerned here with the electrical. And so the physics of it is, and I showed it um, last week with um, using um, the oscilloscope, um, my oscilloscope, my PC oscilloscope, is that you get, um, in order, in order for a musical musical note to sound different, um, you need to have different harmonics. And the harmonics are always multiples of the fundamental frequency. So in this, in this case, we've got 50 Hertz. Um, and we know this frequency from when stereos are set up wrong or, 
you know, the local band is setting up in the local village hall or whatever, and they get, they, it's only half plugged in, so you get a parcel short and you get a wah noise, and that's at 50, that's at 50 hertz. And um, so, but in order to modify the shape of that, so that if I'm playing it on, say, a, a, a clarinet instead of a, a flute, a flute is a pure note, but a clarinet obviously is jazzy. And so the flute has a pure sine wave, just like um, the mains should be um, as supplied to our homes. And also should be all in all the wiring around our homes, but it tends not to be. And the reason is, is because of distortion and interference. And distortion is mainly caused by what's called power supplies. So when you're changing the voltage, and you're converting it from alternating current to direct current to charge the battery on your laptop or phone or power your PC screen or whatever it is. Um, those little devices, they're called power supplies, and they are there are dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of them in a typical home now, and some of them don't work very well and can cause a lot of um, EMI or electromagnetic interference. And another word for this electromagnetic is dirty electricity. Um, this is a, um, an American engineer's thing. Um, so when we've got electromagnetic interference, EMI, caused by these power supplies, they tend to um, occur in multiple, multiple, multiple frequencies, um, multiples of the fundamental. So um it any any system in your body which happens to resonate at some multiple of the um of the fundamental i it'd be 50 or 100 150 and it'll go right on up to the thousand a thousand million times a second i.e gigahertz um then if you happen to get one of those, it will affect you. It will affect it will affect your health. And so it's very, very important to a measure dirty electricity and then secondly get rid of it. Very important to um, uh, to to get rid of electromagnetic interference, the dirty electricity. Basically, the two ways of doing it. One is to disconnect or re re-equip the the source of the noise. Yeah, you can do that by unplugging, unplugging things and um, until it goes away. But in order to know whether what level of the noise is there, of course, you need to have a meter. And um, there's we we recommend the Stetson meter. Um, it's got a rather um, it's got a very old um, design and and also. Inherently, the algorithm is from, I don't know, about the turn of the century, I think. And uh, whereas there are um, others um, which go to higher frequencies. But the thinking is, and also that the research is, that has been done, is that above 120,000 cycles a second, 120 kilohertz, which is which is what the Stetson meter goes up to, then it's not so it not doesn't affect you so much. But opinions differ on that, and therefore um, it may be it, it we may introduce an, a, another meter in in the future. But um, certainly the Stetson meter is one that the researchers by Magda Havas has been done on is is uh, and is a very is a very good one, and. Um, again, it, it, it just goes up to 1999 and then people get very confused and think that it's broken because it just displays a one on the left hand corner then and that means overload. And um, if it was a more modern design, no doubt there'd be a processor programmed in there which would say something like overload, but it, it, it's the electronics inside are fairly primitive and therefore it only, it only does that. And um, so experience has shown that ideally you want to get it to down to about 25 units. Um, and the, the, uh, the meter was designed by Professor Graham and Dave Stetzer. So it's called 
the a, a Graham Stetzer unit, a GSU, these units. So you need to get GSUs down to about 25 um, if you can. And very often it's, it's impossible to do that with simple plug-in filters. Now, um, so we we do DE2s. Um, so again, that's an, that's an Enfield's design. And the critical thing about that is that um, dirty electricity is getting so much stronger all the time. People are plugging in more and more electronic devices. And so the dirty electricity that has to be absorbed by these, these filters gets more and more and more. And there have been cases um, of um, them overheating. And um, so uh, anyone using these plug-in filters, whatever manufacturer they are, always check how warm they are because, and if they start getting too hot, you must switch them off. The exception is the M Fields one, the DE2 that we sell. There are, there are um, three components in that which actually stop it overheating. So if it gets if it gets mildly warm, it can just switch off and come back on again. If it gets really hot, it will switch off and then stop working for good. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a very, very good safety thing, which you, you really do need to know about. And the DE2, so the only one, is the only model of this um, filter originally invented by Dave Stetzer, um, which um, has this heat cut out. And that's really, really important. Um, so th those are the three key meters. Um, there's also, um, you can get a, anywhere on Amazon or wherever, um, a thing called a multimeter, which is a basic electro electric electricians and electro elect electronic engineers tool for measuring um, current voltage and, and resistance. Um, and um, they that sort of, and that really does complete your tools. Um, I could talk about um, dowsing of um, I water divining of uh, uh, what's called earth energies, um, and I've got a case at the moment of uh, a customer where we've tried everything electrically, um, and we've still got problems. And I think. I'm going towards the idea that we should be looking more at um, what's um, uh, negative energies in the earth. In other words, geopathic, geopathic um, energies, which are found with um, with a divining rod. Um, and um, we we can have a look at those at a, a later date as well. And we can talk about all the different um analysis of 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 um, geopathic energy so that's my basic kit that's the tools you need to start doing your own and surveying and don't skimp don't buy don't get the the cheaper um, cheaper meters get a meter that you can rely on um, and the, the ones on our website and we're not the only people who sell them so i'm just you can you can buy them walk for wherever, but um, do um, do 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 get good quality ones anyway. So um, I'm I think it's time for questions now. Um, so we get to quarter two. Time's gone very quickly as always. In the chat we've got five. How long will it take to get the item I ordered two weeks ago from your website? Well, normally our turn our, our, our turnaround is is you know say uh, two days maximum, and then we send we send everything uh, with one day. So and normally three three days or less, unless it's not in stock, or unless it is something like a bedsheet that needs to be made up um, for you. Um, and those can take a couple of days longer. But normally, Vic, who is on online today, um, 
is is very responsive. Do do call her and discuss. Oh, DE filters make me feel I'm going to die. So Nikki, let's discuss that. It was the bed bag where I've not heard anything from you. So that's from Jedi. Okay, so um uh one new message. What's the name of the headphone? It's this headphone is called the professional headset. This this one here. The professional headset. So call that. So you, you can use it while you're working and you can be you can be typing and whatever else and getting on with what you need to work on while while using that. I, I, this is great actually for me. I'm able to be on the phone if I'm if I'm if I'm using that um, more than you know quarter of an hour and I and I start getting a headache. Well, with this I can just go on. I can just for me everybody's different, but for me I could continue using using those things all day. Um, and now that we've got that other adapter, they're much more flexible. It's great. So anyway, um, so it's the, the the landline unit is it's called the professional headset, and it's on on our website. Uh, Nikki, have you got anything? Uh, yes, that that thing about dirty electricity filters making me feel like I'm going to die. Well, so you you where do you plug them in? Um, I. OK, the first time I was exposed to one was in a large building um, full of a lot of electrosensitive people. And Alistair Phillips went home and came back with a variety of DE filters. Oh, yeah. I plugged one into the wall. Yeah. And I went, oh, God, that's better. And then instantly went, oh, no, it's not. It's worse. <laughs> right. Okay. And the suggestion at the time was maybe it was that... <sighs> It was it was the adapting to the change that might be problematic. So I have tried putting them in main sockets at home here um, and persisting. And actually, the electrosensitive symptoms just get worse and worse and worse to the point where I think I'm actually putting myself in danger now. Pull yeah. this out. Um, so, which is very frustrating because like everybody else, I have dirty electricity on my system. Um, so, yeah, I wondered if you had any thoughts on that and, and whether... Oh, well, yeah. well so dirty, dirty electricity is incredibly complex. Um, and so if you look at it on an oscilloscope, there's all kinds of different patterns in there going on um, because the different the different sources of of the dirty electricity make, make different patterns. Um, the... Uh, the plug-in filters that you're talking about that Alistair Phillips um, used to make um, is um, it's a very, very simple device. You could have made a similar device 100 years ago because all it is is basically a, 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 a socking grate capacitor. I mean, there are lots of there are other safety things in there, but but that that's what that's the active component. And what that's doing is in a very primitive way is um a, is what's called a high pass filter so it will allow through it you you can higher frequencies will will flow through the capacitor but lower frequencies won't so all of that higher frequency intermediate frequency noise gets gets short circuit and disappears and um, at its simplest level, they're incredibly effective, but there are a number of caveats here. Um, one is that um, a lot of the dirty electricity is so strong now, they just won't touch it. And most particularly from um, heat pumps and, and solar panel inverters. So people now are beginning uh, more and more and more are producing their own electricity. Whereas we used to get dirty electricity from plugging in electronic devices, um, central heating pumps uh, or stereos or computers and their screens and all that kind of stuff. So you're looking at just stuff which is gently consuming electricity, but doing it in not a very clever or clean way. So the, it subtracts it off the power and what's left of the power is dirty. 
when and and the little plug-in filters can do can for for most people um, for me certainly um have a, have a great effect on tidying up the dirty electricity now there's a problem with that because the dirty electricity can be produced anywhere in your building and if the filter is mopping it up on the other side of the building there are a lot of strange equalizing currents running between the filter and the device that's generating the the, the noise and uh that and that can affect electrosensitive badly so rule number one is um have a meter not just by the filters buy a meter as well so and you can try putting your your filters in different places until you you get a minimum value now while they're working they produce a magnetic field which is about uh, a foot or so uh, outside the meter so to be sure make sure nobody's anywhere you know within about 18 inches of one of these filters or you're going to be affected and then so so if you combine that if you can get if it's just a single source of noise say well i don't know it was a a, 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 a fridge that was causing all these problems or an old boiler or something or in one case it was a very very old power supply for a doorbell which was kind of 1930s and it was kind of on its last legs and that one thing was causing a massive amount of dirty electricity so if you're lucky while you're going around with your meter you will find a single a single source of lots of dirty electricity and you can unplug that and get rid of it you don't even need the filters then and um but more often than not it's multiple and so you you can never quite get rid of it all and the neutralization of that dirty electricity will be along the along the wires between the filter and whatever your device is there so they have their they have their distinct limitations and if there's a, for instance a solar panel inverter anywhere near then they get completely swamped and they just don't change the dirty electricity at all. So even if, unfortunately, say your inverter's three doors down your street, um, but it's causing a significant amount of thing, you will find you'll plug the filter and it'll make no difference at all. Um, it just, it's, they're just not capable uh, engineering wise of, of dealing with the problem. Now, um, so take a modern washing machine. So you've just got out, you've got yourself a, a nice modern high-tech washing machine. Um, any of the brands do it. And what they do now is they have what's called variable speed electric motors. In the old days, electric motors used to, just used to go at one speed. And in fact, washing machines used to have to have a gearbox so that when they wanted to spin, you would, they would change gear and speed up speed up the rotation of the drum. Um, whereas now, what they do, they just have one have a motor and a belt around the drum, and they instead of having a gearbox, they just speed up the motor. But these motors, um, in order to run at different speeds, need a digital controller. Now, that should <laughs> raise questions immediately about what, what can this digital controller cause problems with dirty electricity the answer is unfortunately very very definitely so just an ordinary you know washing machine you, you go and you, you go and buy and install these days can cause massive dirt, can cause massive dirty electricity problems and if you're sensitive you will feel it so um i have you what what it needs is a filter that you plug in between the socket on the wall and and the washing machine itself and it just so happens i have one here so there we are full of complicated electronic components we plug you plug this into the wall and you plug the 
the washing machine into that. And what this does, so all the power for the washing machine comes through this, but also all the dirty electricity going going at the moment out into your, your electrics is filtered by this. And, it, and it, they really work well. Um, and so we haven't got them on the website yet, but they'll be they'll be coming soon. They're called it's called an inline inline filter. So all the dirty electricity coming out of out of the unit will do that. And for lower power um, heat pumps, they will they they will work there as well. But we do we do a great big filter, which is about a foot by eighteen inches by six inches deep and a big and a big um, weatherproof box that takes all the noise out of um, solar panel inverters and the big powerful um, 30 amp um, heat pumps. And so that will, you know, the lady we originally designed them for, as soon as she put, put a switch to heat pump on, had to get out of the house. <laughs> Anyway, so they're, they're, they're really, really quite powerful um, in terms of generating dirty electricity. But inverters are shockers. I mean, you know, they, they really go mad. So um, on, on the Stetson meter, which goes up to 1999 before it goes to overread the one, the one symbol, um, uh, always, I've not seen an inverter which didn't give an overread signal, i.e., Graham Stetzer units of more than 2,000. And um, our filter cuts it down to about 25. A bit bare is a bit, but that's that's what it does. So um, more, more of those on our website. I, I'll be talking about more of those later. Anyway. Um, it, can I just ask one question about the, the filter and the capacitor? Yeah, um, sure. Given that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, what does it do with the energy that it's filtering out, what does that get turned into? Heat. Okay, thank you. So just kind of an inefficiency. Um, so um, Vic, Victorian, what's the, what number would you prefer people to, to, to ring? I, well, I, I, can, I, I, can, I can find it um, anyway. Right, so it's 01273845568. So uh, generally in terms of ne next week, um, I would, should we talk a bit more about dirty electricity? Because I don't think we've, we've finished this. Um, and then I'll talk about the next thing to look for um, when doing your own surveys to understand what goes on in surveys. And most particularly, I want to concentrate on electric fields. They're really important and they're, they're really, really difficult to, to measure. And ah, where can we get last week's presentation? There were there were instructions on that on the on the invitation look on the invitation and we'll put it again on the invitation to how you can access all of them okay um any any other questions now before we finish yeah guy can i just ask i i've got a cuscom too yeah um, how does that actually compare to the classic two? Is does the classic two pick up more kind of five G or not? Is it worth me getting one? Basically, um, they're very very similar. Um, the uh, the classic two just shows that it's it's been it's been developed more recently, so there's a couple of extra functions on it, um, but I. I don't know whether it's more or, or less um, accurate. Um, and and over its life, the Acousticom 2 did actually change its aerial a couple of times, which means that in certain circumstances, older and newer Acousticoms will give 
distance with different results. All of these meters are incredibly sensitive to their um, their their sensors, as you might expect, mm -hmm. um, and also the variability over, over the frequency is really important. But that's why it it's incredibly important to have this. So uh, to have a meter that's properly designed and um, certified, the um, an improvement in the Classic Two is that it has a, a calibration certificate. So each one as it's going out is tested across the frequencies to make sure they all go. So, so yes, broad, they, they do very much the same job, but there are significant improvements on the Classic 2. Thank you. <laughs> um, right, so... Okay, well, it's um, we're four, four minutes over. I'm very much looking forward to next week because I've done an awful lot of work on dirty electricity, um, and it is um, it's a very significant um, part of uh, of what we do, and um, and the the filter the filters that we've built um, are um, are working really well, and um, so. Um, part of my survey, the bit that I do to do with dirty electricity is classically important. And we're finding all the time from a biological point of view um, that um, dirty electricity is, is um, a very, very strongly important part of, of what affects our bodies. So that Fundamentally, the electric fields and magnetic fields, low frequency ones that we've been measuring for years, what we're finding out is that it's the um, distortion in those in those um, the main supply, which has all these different frequencies, um, just like on a musical instrument coming out of it. Uh, on, on a system which causes resonance of systems in our bodies and that's what causes the disease um, and therefore dirty electricity it, it really does need to be um, does need to be dealt with and shouldn't be ignored even though that it's uh, often often forgotten about so anyway so um, thank you all for um, attending this week and um, uh, I look forward to talking again next week. Okay. Right. Bye now.